Good morning guys and welcome to this edition of Hikopedia. First of all, I'd like to say thank you for all the concern. So many of you have reached out to ask about myself and my family and our safety following the recent large earthquake here in Taiwan. And I'm glad to report that we are all fine. Of course, we were a little shaken up just like everybody, but in retrospect, extremely lucky our only casualty being a broken alarm clock in the living room. Of course, I'm also extremely thankful that I wasn't on a hike that day because even though Shinju County was far from the epicenter, the effects were still felt. Take a look at this shot of the summit of Mount Shunyo. I myself was there just a few weeks ago. Now, I've also received quite a few requests to talk about recent events here and although I was initially reluctant to do so, I've thought about it and decided to share a few things I've learned about Taiwan and earthquakes over the years and during my 20 odd years living here. Now many people's first question was, why so few casualties given the magnitude of this earthquake? And the first and most important factor to this is simple, the epicenter of the quake itself. Now, as most people know, Taiwan is located on the Pacific Ring of Fire, so regular earthquakes are a given. But this is compounded by the fact that Taiwan has several significant fault lines on either side of the island. However, this time the Tembler took place along the very active fault line that runs south of Hualien. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with Taiwan's geography, most of its 24 million people live along the western side of the massive central mountain range. And that is the main reason why the number of casualties was so low. Hualien County is a large, sparsely populated administrative region located around halfway up the east coast while Hualien City, the nearest settlement to the epicenter, has a population of just around 100,000. As a rural population centre, most of the buildings are low-rise, which mitigates the chances of mass casualties from building collapses. This is why it saw relatively few deaths, with just one occurring within the city itself. Most of those killed, in fact, were hit by falling rocks while travelling along Taiwan's east coast or through Taroko Gorge. Taiwan's east coast is visually spectacular, with towering mountains plummeting hundreds of metres straight down into the Pacific Ocean. Which makes for beautiful photographs, but driving along this stretch of the coast is notoriously hazardous. Things have gotten much better in recent years with the opening of a new, safer inland route that consists mainly of tunnels, although some sections of the road still hog the cliffs. The gorge, meanwhile, is a must-see for visitors to Taiwan. It's home to some quite spectacular scenery and hair-raising hiking trails, but it is also a place fraught with danger. I myself have hiked there in the past along the Zuelu Old Trail and one only has to look at this footage to imagine what would happen if you were hiking there when a large earthquake struck. Almost all of the people declared dead or missing were in the gorge at the time of the quake. And while it's a terrible thing that anyone perished at all, we should be thankful that the earthquake didn't take place 24 hours later, as April the 4th was a national holiday here in Taiwan, and the death toll would much likely have been substantially higher. This would also have been the case if the earthquake had occurred on the other side of the island. Like the last big one, which took place on September the 21st, 1999, known locally as the 921 earthquake. Now this shaker occurred on the other, more populated side of the central mountain range, with the epicenter located very close to here in Jiji, Nanto County. The 921 quake struck at 1.47 a.m. with a magnitude of 7.3 and caused huge amounts of damage. 
It destroyed more than 50,000 buildings, including Wuchang Temple here, damaged even more and resulted in almost 2,500 deaths. This was also my first experience of an earthquake, occurring just one year after I arrived in Taiwan. Living in Taipei at the time, the tremors were so strong that I was literally shaken out of bed. One can only imagine what it was like here, 200 kilometers south of Taipei, close to the epicenter. Except I don't need to imagine, as my wife's family are from the region, and they told me exactly what it was like. Along with many others in Nanto City, their house was damaged beyond repair, and they were forced to move out, sleeping in a tent for several weeks before eventually relocating. The collapsed buildings were a mixture of both old and new. The quake exposing shoddy building practices and in some cases construction related corruption. In one startling example, a brand new apartment block located far from the epicenter in Xinjiang, New Taipei City, collapsed like a domino. Ever since then, new buildings in Taiwan have been subject to much stricter regulations, while older buildings have been strengthened. New tower blocks and skyscrapers are now built using steel frames, designed to withstand strong tremors. These regulations are another reason given for the low death toll in this most recent quake. Another is that for decades, buildings in Taiwan have been constructed using reinforced concrete, which meant that they already stood up pretty well to earthquakes. As a result, only around 100 residential buildings were badly damaged in Hualien this time around, which when you think about it, is pretty amazing. As a comparison, let's take a look at Christchurch in New Zealand. I was lucky enough to first visit there in 1997, and back then it was a beautiful, thriving, but old city. However, when I went back there in 2016, just five years after the devastating 2010-2011 earthquakes, the city centre was largely gone. The old buildings were just not up to scratch, and those that didn't collapse during the earthquake were later deemed unsafe and demolished. To me, this perfectly illustrated how resilient Taiwan's modern day infrastructure is. However, another major quake in a population center in Taiwan would still prove devastating, no matter how safe its buildings are. That's why preparation is key, which leads me on to the second question many people have asked. Why was Taiwan so well prepared? Again, the simple answer is, Taiwan has lots of earthquakes, so it kind of has to be prepared. During any given week, Taiwan has several tremors of various magnitudes. Most of them, as you can see here, are small and inconsequential, but occasionally, like recently, you get a big one. They don't happen that often, but when they do, you still need to be prepared and know what to do in such an emergency situation. And thankfully, most Taiwanese do. As my friend, a Hualien native, recently said to me, natural disasters can't be avoided, so there's no need to live in fear. Just be prepared. Okay guys, that is it for today's video. Um, before I sign off, I'd just like to express my condolences to those people who lost their lives in last week's earthquake and also their family members. It's a really tough time for them. If you found this interesting, then you know what you can do. You can give me a like, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications if you'd like to catch my future content. Uh, yeah, that's it. I think we'll be back on the road next week. So in the meantime, take care and I'll see you next time. Over and out.